let's talk about what are my expectations for Honkai Star Rail version 1.2. The only thing that I'm really looking forward to the most is Kafka. And that's pretty much it. Because um, I didn't re really pay attention to the events in Honkai Star Rail version 1.1. Other than the fact that the, the last the version 1.1 is basically um, they're just dropping a, a silver wolf um, story event, and then they drop some um, companion missions. Um, uh, I believe there's uh, I think there's three of them which are Wocha, Bailu, and Yan Qing. Yeah, it's Yan Qing. I was about to say Yan Pei, but Yan Pei is a Genshin character. It's Yan Qing, Yan Qing. So, um, among the three, right, I think Rocha is like, like the least... Uh, the least interesting among the three. I I don't know about you guys, but to me, Rocha is like the least interesting um, companion mission among the three. I think Yan Qing's one is like the, the, the most interesting one among them all, compared... Um, Bailu comes close um, second because Yan Qing's um, companion mission is basically an, an introduction to one a, a new character which will be available sometime late, later in the future which is Jin Liu. Jin Liu is um, Jin Ren's um, mentor and um, from what I know right, her, her role, her, her objective at the moment is to search for Blade. For what? The purpose of um, searching for black that I don't know. Ho hopefully, right, we will get more um, more story in uh, version 1.2 in regards to uh, hopefully more in regards to Kafka and Blade and hopefully more on uh, this Jimmy's mentor Jimmy. So yeah, the um, and as a matter of fact, right, I did save up like about 200 ish um, gold special tickets because just so you know right i have not spent a single gold ticket in any of the limited gacha banner at all i didn't spend a single resources on zilla's banner not a single resource on um, jing yen's banner not a single resource on silver Wolf's banner and not a single resource on low charge banner. So that's practically four banners that I skip. Because from the moment I laid my ass on Castle, I my mind was like, I want her. I really want her. I don't give a shit about what you guys say about her, I want her. And that's all I have to say about that. So shut up, that pick up. So far the only character that picks my attention the most is without a shout. Kafka is like one of the sexiest characters I've seen in Hokkaido Sari at the moment. I mean, there are quite a few other char female characters that pick my interest. Um, for example, there's Nico, there's um, Yuko, and there's um, as I recently Jin Yu. But my highest priority right now is. I want to get my hands on Kafka and probably um, I will get her signature light code. And as a matter of fact, right, uh, uh, a friend of mine who goes by the name of uh, Murasaki Yui, he mentioned to me that um, it's better if you get um, Kafka at E1 because she shines much more better at E1. So. I'm thinking, okay, you know what, let's um, go for E1 Kafka first and then I'll go for her signature life cone. Because um, I think I do have a life cone prepared for her at the moment. It's the one where she's in a, uh, a bathtub. Who would have that life? The art of that life cone. I forgot what the name of that life cone, but that art is just. Woo! Oh, chef's kiss, my body, chef's kiss. So yeah, I definitely be looking forward to getting my hands on Kafka, and hopefully, um, they, hopefully in version 1.2, right? They, 
release more um, story quests. Hopefully more on Kiaka. Once again, hopefully more on more story mode on Kiaka. And hopefully more story mode on Zed and Jing Yu. Yes, <laughs> Okay, what is um well <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, I always knew you were a dark horse, Mr. Yeah, Yang. Well, speak for yourself. Uh, you, you know, uh, Albert, uh, I, 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 if I had met you a few years ago, my creative career would have taken a, a more interesting turn. <laughs> you know, I heard you had something new in the works. What's it about? Let me guess. The Adventures of the Nameless. Well, it's early concept at the moment. Uh, the Express crew has given me a lot of food for thought, but it, still, when it comes to key plot points, uh, I'm in need of some inspiration. Ooh, inspiration? Uh, how about, uh... Mm, how about this? We give you some ideas. After all, I know that when voice. it comes to scripts, we're seasoned professionals. I know that voice. That's Cap oh, that's voice. Chill out, Albert. The rules of this game are like reality. We all think we have infinite possibilities, but when you really analyze it, every question oh my, and oh answer my God. is constrained oh, by Poivers, please. Poivers, what? <laughs> Do you have to show? Yeah. You have to turn. You have to turn me on like that. You have to turn me on like that. Woo! Tommy. Oh my god, she sounds so good. She sounds so good. And as a matter of fact, like, Capcom should really hire her as the as, as new Ada Wong or some sort. I'm, no, no, no offense to the, the current Ada Wong voice actress, but I feel like Capcom should hire um, Kafka's voice actress as the uh, new Ada Wong's voice actress or some sort. And here, right here, we have um, Blady. I mean, Blade, sorry! <laughs> Whoa, 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 what the hell? The power you carry is the key to opening the way What did I just see? What did I just see? What happens next? What the hell is new monsters? Whoa. You and you. All three of you are staying right here. Yen Qing against me. Whoa, 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 what is past lives change the world. Whoa, what the hell? Well, in Jing Yuan? Wait, is that Dang He looks different though! Oh my goodness, who in the blue hell is she? We're getting a new boss? Whoa, that's... That's a lot of stuff that I need to process. And oh my gosh, Kafka looks so... F fine, like... Woo! Mommy! <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. I can't help myself. Okay. I. I really, really like um, Kafka. So shut up. So shut it. I really love Kafka. Okay. So shut up. Ooh, and whether or not your world has a day-night cycle. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. I'm your buddy Albert. And welcome to the my, version the one point two. Even immortality ends. Special program. Today we have three special guests in the hot seats. <laughs> Introducing. Hey guys, I'm Cheryl Texera, and I voice Kafka. Hey there, I'm Damon Mills, and I voice Blake. Though. Hi folks, my name is Corey Landis, and I voice Welt. Guys, it's great to have you with us. Her <laughs> normal voice sounds different. Holy so shit! <laughs> Corey. And she's she been bringing <laughs> that me mommy already. Voice okay. Like, oh uh, um, well, uh, it, it looked like various yeah, factions really were getting as, ready uh, for battle. Uh, some, I, I think uh, we're we're Once one again, move away no from a serious showdown. Uh, <laughs> it I was cool like, to see some new environments and enemies too. I gotta get my team Shell out of <laughs> You're gonna need Ada to, my friend. The, the new voice of Ada Wong. In version 1.2, so she, she really she brings that mommy vibe, man. a setback that threatens the fate of the whole and, alliance. Oh, the trailblazer, good. We need to pass through various delves good. and arrive at the location. Good, we have a new, um, Shell Base Mission. Ambrosial Arbor, where a decisive battle 
But the one responsible for the Stellaron disaster awaits. Not to mention, Don Hung finally gets reunited with the Astral Express crew. Don Hung's journey has been longer than most could imagine. Don't care to elaborate, Damon? Uh, I didn't say anything. Oh, come on, guys. Trying to get me fired here. D -d -d Editors, cut that bit out. <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? Oh, right. The okay. story left off on a bit of a cliffhanger last time. Move on to the program, sure Alva. Move on to the program. Why did deploy those forces? Who is he trying to catch? And what about the Stellaron hunters? Where did they go after escaping? Well, who says they went anyway? <laughs> Cut that out, too. <laughs> I'm sure all these questions will be answered in the upcoming story. Now. Aside yeah. from trail definitely we'll be checking out the trail list mission was one point two new characters coming to the war. <laughs> yeah, first on the scene, Blade. Okay, we're starting things off with Blade, which means it's, it's quite likely that um, Blade will be in phase one of the the limited banner of version one point two, and then the sec um. Phase 2 will be Kafka. I have a question for Damon. Um, if, say, there were five people, would I be one of them? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, me neither. I kind of want to uh, play, though, because his me. voice, his Japanese voice is by a very... Okay. Um, <laughs> well, well quite I'm well pretty sure I'm not one of the five people, but here is a fact for you. Miki Whenever Blade gets who is scary, the Japanese it's the voice flaring for up. Ujiwara Takumi <laughs> from Initial D. Always Mustang for uh, he Fuga usually does what I tell him. <laughs> I should He's probably also the unpack Japanese that voice a little. Blade Uda relies Hara on Kafka's for spirit whisper to suppress the Mara inside him. Yeah, and, um, that's what I meant to say. Right you know, most of the time, less, Blade is a nice, he's, quiet boy. Right he's, totally. to, um, <laughs> he's not a strong communicator, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, half my recording uh, sessions uh, have focused on two sounds. Number one, if I... If Number I'm two. not mistaken. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> huh. It's strange that a lone wolf like him would want to team up with the Stellaron hunters. Unless Kafka's spirit whispered him into it. Mm, Kafka was more of a go-between. The real reason Blade joined was because Elio promised him the outcome he desired. Uh, the, the outcome? Meaning, uh, vengeance? Look, a certain... Someone on the Express has been having nightmares about this guy. <laughs> Not just vengeance, a funeral. <laughs> a funeral? Mm -hmm. funeral. He's on to be precise. <laughs> Through unexpected circumstances, Blade became immortal. His body recovers from the worst of sicknesses and the gravest of injuries, even from death itself. Those bandages oh. aren't for show. For Blade, immortality isn't a blessing. It's a curse that follows him wherever yeah. he goes. Yikes! <laughs> and I thought I had a problem, huh? Well, uh, let's leave something to the imagination here. <laughs> I'm sure our trailblazers will find out a, more uh, about Blaze's backstory as things Blade. unfold. For now, let's take a look at what he's capable of on the battlefield. Blade is a wind-type character, mm -hmm. following the path of destruction. By consuming his the own path HP, of destruction, he's able to okay. deal greater damage to enemies. <laughs> and I guess that's the risk you take when you're a mortal. <laughs> <laughs> Blade's skill consumes a set amount of his own HP and initiates Hellscape. Mm -hmm. While Hellscape is active, Blade deals greater damage, and his basic attack is enhanced from Shard Sword to Forest of Swords. Wait, he consumes While Shard Sword a is a single target attack, Forest stronger? of Swords deals damage to the boss, multiple That's about enemies. a similar concept as Hu Tao. Can Where you activate her elemental skill, is it enough to cover the uh, set amount? Uh, uh, in set that situation, when Blade uses his skill, she, his um, HP her, decreases uh, to uh, her normal attacks and charge attack dicey. is infused with uh, Well, there's a silver damage. lining. When Blade's HP decreases, his mm -hmm. talent is triggered, granting him a charge. When charges right. are fully stacked, Blade mm -hmm. unleashes a follow-up attack on all enemies and recovers a set amount of HP. Damn. When Blade unleashes his ultimate, his HP is set to 50% of his max HP, and he deals massive damage to a single target and adjacent enemies. HP for damage, huh? Interesting. No wonder he's uh, so indifferent to being healed. 
<laughs> and the more HP Blade loses, the more damage his ultimate deals. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, yeah, Blade's, Blade's technique, so, Karma so Wind, Blade also consumes right, his is, HP uh, and deals wind damage to all Honkai enemies after entering battle. Without Ooh, when it comes to taking damage, Blade should be more afraid of himself than his enemies. Mm, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Ooh. <laughs> Damn. You yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, so, your mommy voice is just... Oh! It's, it's just music to my ears. Another stellar rod hunter. <laughs> His partner in crime, Kafka. Right. Damn, she's so fine looking. I want her. I really, really want her. I don't give a damn what others say about her. I want her. Mess her up. Boom. She's got style as a matter of fact. is a familiar face at this point in the story. She was the first person the Trailblazer set eyes on it. Yep. Meaning Kafka must have been there for the Trailblazer's first words. The first step. <laughs> no wonder so many players are calling her on. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, I don't think that's going to get past the editors there, Albert. Um, look, what, what, what I am interested in is this. Since Kafka appeared on Herta Space Station, she's managed to implant the Trailblazer with the Stellaron, hijack the Express's signals, mm -hmm. and draw the crew onto the Cien Jo La Fu. Mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like she has the Trailblazer's destiny in the palm of her hand. It's like Kafka said, when it comes to scripts, the Stellaron hunters are seasoned professionals. Well, that might be the case, but mm -hmm. that's not to say the Trailblazer's choices aren't important. What's a script without a director? Mm, reach She's the end the of the story in your own way. Mm. <laughs> I've got another question. Why did Kafka join the Stellaron hunters? Oh. Oh. So, Kafka was born on Teres 5, a planet that knows no fear. And literally, Kafka is unable to feel the emotion of fear, and therefore cannot comprehend the value of life. When mm -hmm. Elio promised to bring about a change for her, she signed up without a second thought. Now, for oh, okay. someone who can't feel fear, she's pretty great at making others feel it. <laughs> This scares you more than it scares me. <laughs> you want me to use my spirit whisper on him, Albert? <laughs> yes. No, no, no. I, I mean, oh. the, let's move God on to Kafka's combat, Albert. shall we? Oh, yes. I thought you'd never ask. So Kafka is a lightning-type character following the path of nihility, mm -hmm. and she can deal additional damage over time to enemies. Her skill deals lightning damage to multiple targets. Mm -hmm. If an enemy is afflicted with DOT, they receive an additional bout of DOT damage. Damn. Well, that is to say, if an enemy is already afflicted with DOT, they receive additional damage both during their turn and after Kafka's attack. That's right. Damn. Not to mention, additional damage doesn't replace existing DOT. I mean, did you think Kafka was going to take it easy on him? Come on. <laughs> and separately, after an ally uses a basic attack, mm -hmm. Kafka will launch a follow-up attack. Kafka's Ooh. ultimate, on the other hand, deals lightning damage to mm -hmm. all enemies with all a enemies. chance of shocking targets Ooh. and immediately dealing additional damage to those already shocked. Kafka's technique can attack all enemies within a set range Damn. and deal lightning damage to all enemies Damn, after I like, entering battle. I like her talent, How though. elegant. Well, <laughs> she likes elegant things. I love her even and more now. And the wish, um, <laughs> while she was exploring it, she uses her, her talent, right? Her enemies are like <laughs> trapped in a way of I want her even more now. I want her even more now. Boom. Boom. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. From HB sacrificing maniacs and emotionless sociopaths to the coolest kid on the block <laughs> it's time to introduce our next character what? Hey, that is a little harsh also since when did wealth <laughs> become the coolest kid on the block <laughs> think again i'm talking about the born and bred bella bog hero luca oh come on oh right i mean uh, there's a they introduced a new um 
character as well. And I believe he's a 4 star character. I'm just glad that uh, Honka is planning to release new 4 star characters on um, So that's every the guy on the light cone. Mm -hmm. He looks a little different on the light cone. Oh, a carefree God fighter from Zwarf, is an right? underworld that's a pretty, fighter um, that goes by the moniker description. Look a strong arm. <laughs> He's a member of Wildfire and apprentice to Oleg. Wait, doesn't the Underworld have a fight club? I guess that must be where Luca spends his time. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. Yep. In and fact, I just realized he's the fight he's club right champion. Office, and not um, only that. He's Met also a reliable like operations a, consultant is, um, for the mole. So he's how do you, with how the mole. Huh? Um, Does Luca know he's a member? Ah, uh, probably. <laughs> I forgot what the, the term again. But his arm reminds me of um Edward Elric's arm um, from a uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, I forgot what the name of the what's the name of the thing again. But fight. yeah, his Let's right arm kind of reminds me of um Edward Elric. Luca is a physical type Alchemist. character following the path of nihility. After multiple attacks, he's able Hold to on, this guy is also following the path of nihility? His okay. skill deals physical damage to a single target and has a chance of inflicting bleed. During okay. battle, Luca can obtain fighting will through a variety of attacks. When fighting will reaches a certain number of stacks, Luca's basic attack is enhanced. His enhanced basic attack deals four hits of damage, with the final hit dealing additional damage to enemies currently inflicted with bleed. Kids today, no <laughs> respect. When Luca unleashes his ultimate, in addition to dealing damage, he also obtains fighting will, and there's a chance of increasing the target's damage received for a set number of turns. <laughs> and when your opponent's fist is the same size as your head, <laughs> it's time to throw in the towel. <laughs> okay. yeah, it's the power of those punches that scares me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure having a uh, robotic arm uh, is also a big help, but I think Luca's strength lies in his love of the sport. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. When using his technique during exploration, Luca mm -hmm. obtains fighting will after entering battle. Jeez, does this guy ever take a break? Well, it was great to start off the program with a character deep dive. Next up, it looks like we've got two brand new five star light cones coming to the war. In oh, we the introducing 2. the light cones first, mm -hmm. okay? Let's start with a path of destruction light cone. The unreachable. This one side. is definitely um, oh, okay. Blade's uh, signature question, light cone. Question uh, The Paradise Blade mentions in his ultimate line is that where he's standing right there? <laughs> I don't know what paradise means to you, Corey, but a barren sword-filled wasteland isn't my idea of a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Here's a fun fact. Each of those swords had an owner, and Blade was the last one to see them alive. Oh, whoa! Okay. So he killed them for their swords. Only a brutal, calculated, jealous mind could do something Stop! like that. Stop! <laughs> The maniac and sociopath segment is over. <laughs> okay. Moving Damn. On to a five star Kafka's like gone light looking fine though. Is all you need. Here we see uh Patience is all you need. Damn, she looking fine man. <laughs> I kind of want to like one as well, but she looks fine. Uh, waiting for the main course to arrive there, huh? <laughs> what do you think, son? The Damn, menu? she looks fine. Though. I really, I, I kind of want to like one to be very honest. <laughs> she, uh, come on, nobody eats out, right? <clears throat> During the uh, first phase of version 1.2 in the character warp, a lot well, yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, as I was speculating like, earlier. Turns out Blade's um, character, Blade's um, Blade comes first. Because they were showing um, Blade, during the second phase they were introducing Blade first. In the character warp, and then Kafka's the, the, the second uh, half of uh, uh, Luca. Version 1.2. Along with in the, the, of the, the new warp, guy, Luca. The drop rate of the okay. five star light cone, patience is all you need, will be boosted! <laughs> and that's a wrap on banners. <laughs> I need to lie down. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, trailblazers. Right. Okay, so hope I'm pretty sure I have um, enough resources for to pull for Kafka, but I'm 
I, I really want to get my hands on her her signature like Kondo because that like that art of her signature like Kondo looks so freaking good man it makes me want really want to get her like like Kondo like to be very honest but and it's kind of fortunate that um, Kafka's um, banner will be on the second face or should I say the second half of um, version 1.2 so at the so it's for, so okay at the very least well, I still have more time to grab more or should I say collect more resources and then I'm gonna once Kafka's um Welcome drops. back everyone! Gonna, uh, As mentioned at the start of the show, spend in version them all in 1.2, one before the Trailblazers' decisive boss battle, they mm -hmm. will need to pass through various dells. <laughs> no surprise then, that 1.2 would unlock oh, two new areas, new area. cool. the Alchemy Commission and Scalegore's Scale Water Waterscape. Now, the Alchemy Commission. Is that where the Sienjo makes its medicines, or...? Ooh, you got it! The Alchemy Commission is one of the six commissions of the Lafu. <laughs> and, for no prize whatsoever, can anyone name all six? Oh, yeah, let's oh. see. The Alchemy Commission, the Divination Commission... Uh, the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, the Cloud Knights... Oh, shoot, what was that other one? Ah, drum roll, please! <laughs> the Realm Keeping Commission! Oh, that's right, that's right. The Alchemy Commission used to focus their efforts on the way of immortality. But these days, it's all about medical research and treating diseases. Now, the Trailblazer came face to face with some Alchemy Commission folks in Exalting Sanctum, but things seemed a little off. Uh, I don't want to create more work for the editors, but I have a theory that the reason Adjacent why that... Adjacent to the Alchemy Commission lies Scale Gorge Waterscape, <laughs> the realm of the video. Uh, he's just <laughs> ignoring us now. We've got a lot Whoa. to get through. What? Oh, where was I? Well, oh. Along with somewhere. the Alchemy Commission and Scale Gorge Waterscape. Oh. Come new puzzle. More puzzles? <clears throat> Brilliant. Things like trailblazers will face a lot of new challenges on the road to the Ambrosial Arbor. I can't, can't wait. Fun. Oh, Albert, are you making Corey read off the teleprompter? Puzzles are the only new challenges trailblazers will be facing in these areas. There are monsters afoot. Right. Uh, first up. A creature of indomitable size and destructive power, the Malefic Ape. <laughs> and next on the list, okay, this... an entity rid of the burden of humanity. Okay, so that has I remodeled think modeled itself in the way of immortality. This enemy is like the Zenjo Lofu version of the one. Yeah, Wait, whoa, 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 what Why the hell? General's aides attack a Cloud Knight lieutenant. Ooh, all will be revealed. The version one point two. What the still. hell? We'll be fighting nah, against I, I Yenchi? Think we skipped an enemy, Albert. Uh, you, you mentioned a boss lurking on the Sienjo Law Fu. Uh, okay, some something's the view. Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> and I believe this is the new um something like a weekly boss. And damn she's huge. That's her alt? What? Well, hold on one second, did she put a domain expansion or some shit? Damn. Wait. And not and not not to mention she transformed, like what the hell man? It's Fantilia the Undying! Wield of the power of both the destruction and the abundance. In her first phase, she summons a phase one, roses, okay. which restore her HP. And reduce the player team's skill points. Weakening her oh, what the and hell? Reduce the team's skill points? But Yikes. that's a first. Mm, that's why choosing the right moment to destroy those Abundance Lotuses is so important. Eliminating an Abundance Lotus recovers three skill points. Well, you know, when you borrow something, you gotta give it back. <laughs> oh, now, in okay. In second phase, Fantilia uses her Destruction Power to summon Destruction Lotuses. These lotuses reduce ally max HP and when in bloom, deal damage to a single target. So, oh. should we just wait for them to stop blooming before we take them out? No, I doubt the power of the destruction is as simple as that. Oh, you're not wrong, Cheryl. When the lotuses aren't in bloom, their toughness doesn't receive damage. As such, trailblazers should seize the moment when the flowers are open to break their weakness. And finally, 
In the third phase, Fantilia goes golden. Hmm, what terrible trick she does she have a first goal? Okay. Oh, oh, I'm afraid Trailblazers gonna have to wait to find out. I, I, I'm oh curious, my. where did Fantilia even come from? That should be from? an interesting How come um, she can boss use fight? the powers of the abundance and the destruction? I mean, I don't I mind a, again, a boss fight where they have like multiple faces. At story. least in that way, right, they, they keep the boss fight interesting. As long as it's not um, long winded like the one that I had. When the combat in, uh, draws to a close. Fantilia the Undying will join the Echo of War and drop the advanced trace materials required yeah. for Blade, Kafka, and Luca. Regrets oh, it's for Blade, Kafka, and Luca. Luca. Okay. And Which a quick reminder, to farm, Trailblazers, um... Echo of War has a limited number of weekly rewards, so don't forget to plan ahead. Also, yep. in version 1.2, Stagnant Shadow, Shape of Celestial is arriving, which drops oh, the brand new, new character new ascension material, materials. Ascendant Debris. Mm -hmm. This is also the ascension material required for Blade. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure it's time to talk about version 1.2 events. Ooh, I won't be surprised. I've been waiting for this segment. <laughs> Let's start with Tales of the Fantastic. The crisis on the right. Xianzhou Lao Fu the, the has the for version 1.2. And the feast of the nameless can be heard on every street corner. <laughs> Starskiff Haven storyteller, Mr. Sien is interested in the Astral Express's tale, eager to work his storytelling magic. Oh, yeah, the storyteller. I'm, I'm familiar with him. I wonder what he'll do with the Trailblazer's story. His, his artistic license and mm -hmm. collage editing bring all kinds of tales to life. <laughs> well, that's Mr. Cien, all right. To spruce up the tale, he's given us a set of protagonist models. Protagonist models? Mm -hmm. What's that? I hear it's kind of a magical object invented by one of the script writers at the Emerge Club. It industrializes the script writing process. As long as you follow its guidance, you'll be able to captivate an audience with your storytelling. Okay. To unleash the full potential of the protagonist models, the trailblazer must accompany Mr. Sien into the past and visit historical battle locations. <laughs> now, the name so now might be a little the book. dull, but don't underestimate the protagonist models. Different combinations have different effects. Once the protagonist models have been properly refined, Legend of the Trailblazer can be a runaway hit. <laughs> oh, this sounds like a fun event. Well, there's more where that came from. <laughs> the next event is called Underground Treasure Hunt. The Underworld Underground of Fraser, all away the miner's lamp, is making a comeback. They say that in Bellabog's great mine, ancient ruins have been discovered where many rare treasures and relics are waiting to be identified. However, according to the senior treasure hunter Axe, there exists a space beneath the ruins where relics of even greater value may be found. The only thing is, the road to the ruin depths is filled with all kinds of danger. Mm -hmm. Treasure hunters must steal themselves and explore sealed areas in order oh, to progress deeper into the ruins. We get to use I'm sure we these have sealed Kafka areas and are Luca full of hidden treasures, treasures, but uh, there's always a catch. Interesting. Surprise and danger rolled into I mean, it's good that um, I'm sure Kafka would get a kick this game is going to find a way courage um, and to slot in events where um, they're going to... The sealed areas will contain I mean, enemies. I'm sorry. But not in um, items and key cards new to characters and some um, trial characters progress. in some events. This is a solo mission, like right? I like it. It sounds it's, like a tough challenge gives to take on alone. To oh, people they won't be alone. If you like this During character's gameplay, after, can be you, sure after trying him or her up, you want uh, to pull him over, go happy to see them. So do treasure hunters get any kind of special rewards? Ah, of course! In the Underground Treasure Hunt event, Aside from the usual stellar jade, treasure hunters can obtain the themed Where's the Rabbit chat box. Ah, uh, okay. isn't the rabbit in the chat box? It's a treasure chest. What I'm trying to say is the theme of the chat box is called Where's the Rabbit? Ah, uh-huh, okay. Uh, so the, the rabbit's in the treasure chest, right? <sighs> in version 1.2, the message and chat box functions will be enabled for the first time. Trailblazers okay. can obtain and swap between chat boxes. And I'm not just talking about the friend chat screen. I'm talking about the game's character interaction chat boxes too. 
Oh, oh, I love the rabbit design. It seems like something Clara would like too. So cute. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. Do you think uh, Svarog could have designed it? For oh, her? maybe. <laughs> Interesting thought. <laughs> Safe to say that chat boxes will continue to get updates. Trailblazers will be able to view and swap between those they already have, as well as view those they've yet to obtain. Mm -hmm. On to the next event. Where are you, Mystery Tribe? This really is the version of missing creatures, isn't it? <laughs> the good news is, all of them can be found. <laughs> Regan Abelabog has come across a new scientific research gadget. Homemade sensor number 223. The device is able to detect mysterious coordinates that display abnormal readings. Ah, uh, I recognize that okay. abnormal reading. Isn't that just a trotter? Oh no, don't tell me that we have to fight it. I mean, sure, it's a little scary, but it's cute, right? Uh, if I told you it dropped Stellar Jade, would would that uh, change how you feel, oh, maybe? Oh, no. yeah, that thing's bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. You know what's tastier than bacon? What? Forgotten Hall updates! <laughs> In version 1.2, <laughs> the brand new memories of Sienjo, the boy Oh, that so this figure, is how we get the uh, yeah, now we're talking. Kong, but That's not all. After clearing the Forgotten Hall memories Memory of Sienjo stage, stage one, one, Trailblazers can obtain the four-star oh, character Oh, so I, they're, they're adding different oh, versions of... the Forgotten um, Hall, the simulated universe will also be receiving an update... Wait, there's a, the now there's a world, world so one. Set. For the simulated universe. The brand new planar ornaments, okay. Rutland Arena, and Broken Keel will be added to the World 7 immersion device. Wow. And the ride doesn't stop there either. In version 1.2's planar fisher. And of course, there's the planar fisher. Trailblazers that successfully challenge the Just simulated like the one universe that in, uh, can obtain a set amount of one. double planar on. ornament rewards. Meanwhile, in the Alchemy Commission's Cavern brand of Corrosion, Trailblazers can obtain the brand new Cavern Relics. Longibus Disciple and Messenger Traversing Hackerspace. Nice. Hmm. And finally, in 1.2's Realm of the Strange event, players Ooh, this that successfully is challenge new. the Cavern of Corrosion can obtain double a set amount of for, double cavern um, relic cavern rewards. Of, for cavern, for Ooh. relics? And, um, this is good. This is a first. I think we're going to pass out for a while. <laughs> Over to you guys. <laughs> no problem, we got you, buddy. We got you. In version 1.2, the two companion missions, Letter from a Go Strange on. Woman and for I have touched the sky will be arriving. Good. In a letter from Kafka the and uh, Liu Kong getting a companion mission. Good. As for how the trail This is a very good respond, ability to get to know more about to both Kafka and when you have Liu a Kong. To make good. A choice, I wish they have a you know companion mission regret. for Blade. Though, to be very honest, but but revealed, only time will tell. Sorry. Isn't he supposed to be passed out? I think someone's playing sound bites. Um, oh, oh, I, I, I should say a little something about the other companion mission. In For I Have Touched the Sky, an accident has occurred in Stargazer Navalia. When the Trailblazer investigates, they find a girl in trouble. Who could she be? And what secrets could you Kong be hiding? You can watch and keep it up with Star Rail. Hey, <laughs> sound guy, a little early on that one. <clears throat> Before we bring things back to a close here, let's talk about the ever popular reward events. <laughs> okay. Version 1.2 will see the wow. return of the gift of Odyssey wow. check it event. During the event, wow. as long as Trailblazers log in for seven days, they doing this again? Holy. They Require 10 Star Rail special pass. Yes, Ooh. I love it. Too. They should do this yes. kind of thing in Let's Genshin, to be very uh, honest, though. Can somebody get chorus? Uh, holy, holy, sh holy sh I did not see that coming. They, they, this, they're doing a gift of Odyssey in version 1.1, and now they're doing another gift of Odyssey in version 1.2? This game is being generous to be damn honest. Way more generous than Genshin as a matter of fact, like I mean Genshin is quite generous, but not as generous as this, like holy sh Wow Well, I said it last time and I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Another special program has come to an end. We talked about a lot of 1.2 features. 
You guys, got any favorites? Um, gotta be that boss fight for me. Uh, when, when the crew fought the Doomsday Beast and Kokolia, Welt was watching from the sidelines. This will be the first time we see him on the battlefield. Ooh. So watch your back, Fantilia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see more of Blade. Heck, I recorded enough fighting efforts to lay down an album. <laughs> <laughs> we better get some fight scenes, come on. Not to mention, it seems like him and Don Hung are finally about to meet. Something tells me they're not gonna settle things over a cup of tea. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, as for me, it is all about Kafka. Although yep. I am curious about the tales of the fantastic event, because it sounds like trailblazers have plenty of room to get creative. Seems like we're all a little biased here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> totally. but one thing is for sure, 1.2 is a version to look forward to. Albert here has done a good job keeping us in check today, you know, and there's still a lot of mystery out there for you trailblazers to delve into. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm without a shadow, I'm enjoying this. Uh, this That's it for Honkai so Star, Star Rail, but it's a nine mind special blowing, um, program, folks. Uh, special program Thanks again to all you trailblazers for tuning in. See you for the next one. Bye, so guys. Bye. 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 Cheerio. Bye. Cheerio. I think that's pretty much good. Okay, I think we're not done yet. The Interest Tropics Corporation has just declared the latest galactic bounty hunt, calling for the capture of the Stellaron Hunters. According to reliable sources, Kafka and Blade are expected to appear. Stellaron Hunters might appear at the Cosmic Refreshment Supply event, which poses a high risk of destruction. We urge the public to remain vigilant. We will announce the whereabouts of the outlaws in due time and are asking for your assistance in bringing them to justice. Okay, global tea event. I don't know what that's all about, but okay. It's been a mind blowing uh, special program, and I did not expect them to give more free um, gold special tickets. Just, I thought it's a one um, one event uh, thingy, but turns out they they were like, you know what? We already done it in uh, version one point one. Why not we do it in uh, version 1.2? And I kind of wish that Genshin has that kind of um, generosity and treatment in fairness. It's been confirmed that the um, Blade will be in the first phase of, uh, of the character banner which, and, and Kafka will be on the second phase of the character banner which gives me more time to play more resources because um, not only I want to get my hands on Kafka, but I also want to get my hands on her signature life code as well. Because as I mentioned earlier, her signature that art of her signature that I code looks fine AF. Like holy hell. And we have new wiki bosses, uh, and we, which will be where the materials for, uh, will be required for Blade, Kafka and um, the new four-star character Luca. And a new um, Ascension um, boss, where Ascension boss, so I'll definitely have um, got, a, got a lot of work to do once apart from two walls. And I did not expect um, them to reveal a new um, location, but it kind of makes sense considering the fact that um, new um, story quest mission definitely gonna, there's gonna be new. Um, Locations unlocked. As for the companion missions, right, I will definitely will be covering um, Kafka's companion mission and Yu Kong's companion mission. Once again, I really wish they'd add in um, Blade's companion mission, but I'm pretty sure there's a reason of why they they put that Blade's companion mission on hold first. And I will definitely be will be covering at least Kafka's companion mission because I'm genuinely want to know her more as to why uh, as her, more of her backstory and her motives. So yeah, that, and that's pretty much um, what I can comment on uh, version 1.2's special program. It's been a blast. It's been a, a mind-blowing blast. And I will say this, the, the special programs for Honkai Star Rail, to me, is much more interesting than Genshin. It might be a hot take, but that's how I I feel. And here's a an off topic. 
I kind of wish that Capcom hires um, Cheryl, who is the English voice for Capcom, as the new um, voice of Ida. Because, no offense to um, the current um, voice of Ada Wong in Resident Evil 4, but I feel like her voice doesn't really suit the, the character. I'm, I'm so sorry for saying this, but it's just a personal um, opinion. I kind of prefer her, her, the, the, her old voice back in uh, Resident Evil 6. I, I get it that um, <clears throat> I, I get it that um, a reboot of the, the series uh, means a, a change of the uh, voice actors. Um, as a matter of fact, right, Resident Evil, they nail majority of the voice actors such as Leon's voice actor, Ashley Phoenix's voice actor, Sui's voice actor, nailed it. Majority of the new like voice actor they made it, so I'm just curious why Ada's um, voice actress is kind of a mess. I'm pretty sure she has done her, her maximum effort, but I feel like her voice doesn't really suit um, Ada, uh, Ada Wong's character. So yeah, I, as, as a like, like I said, I kind of wish that Capcom hires. Um, Shallow as the as the Ada's uh, voice actress. Then again, this is just um, um, a personal opinion. Hopefully, no offense. So yeah, I think that's pretty much what I can talk about uh, version 1.2. It's been a blast. It's been a whole blast, and I'll definitely be looking forward to get my hands on Kafka and her signature light phone once version 1.2 drop.